Good afternoon, and welcome to our newest episode of Profiles in Leadership, brought to you by Apex Atlanta and Supply Chain Now Radio. My name is Scott Luton. I serve as Executive Vice President for Apex Atlanta, and we're glad to have you join us here today. We are broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the East Coast, Atlanta, Georgia. Our Profiles in Leadership programming serves to spotlight industry leaders from across the end-to-end supply chain. Today, we're going to be focusing on an extraordinary member of the next generation, Ms. Kivia Morgan. Hi. So, hey, Kivia, how, how are you doing this afternoon? Good. How are you? Terrific. We're going to, before we get started, we want to give a big thanks to our sponsor today, Talent Stream. So, Talent Stream specializes in helping organizations find premier talent in the engineering, the manufacturing, and the supply chain space. Uh, the firm's a big supporter of Apex Atlanta and Supply Chain Now radio programming. And if you want more information on Talent Stream, check them out at talentstreamstaffing.com. But more importantly, we welcome our featured guest, Ms. Kivia Morgan, today. Kivia, how are you? Great. How are you doing? Doing terrific. Are you keeping warm in this Arctic weather here in Georgia? Yeah, it's a pretty nice day out here today, though. <laughs> it's been cold this yeah. week, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been freezing, but, you know, that's how it is in Georgia. That's right. And if you don't like the weather, you just wait two hours, right? Yep. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. hey, thanks for spending some time with us today. We look forward to uh, forward to learning more about you, uh, your background, and really, you know, we want to talk more about the journey that you're on. So uh, let's talk about your background first. You So you've spent five years in, in the United States Army, right? Yeah, five years active duty in the United States Army. Did it feel like 20 or did it feel like five days? It felt like 20. <laughs> <laughs> so in the Army, you served as a logistics and supply chain specialist. So uh, what, what were some of the projects and initiatives that, that you led while, while active duty? You said what were some of the positions? Yeah, what were some of the projects or activities that you led in that role oh. in the Army? So basically, um, I did various um, roles. One of the roles that I did primarily was working in um, um, a lot of distribution centers. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, leading a lot of projects, I initiated a lot of um, systems to better um, help with the complex logistics systems that we did within the military. And I've also had, like, leadership roles um, in the receiving section of my distribution center where I was the go-to team leader of our section and basically just facilitating the um, equipment and making sure that customers um, got their product within a timely manner. Hmm. Well, Sounds like a big role. Yeah, it was very interesting too. And it, and it kept you busy, I'm sure. Did you ever deploy overseas with the Army? Yeah, I did. Uh, one of the most exciting um, deployments I did was actually um, it was with a task force. Um, but that was in Kuwait. Um, I've been to Germany, um, Alaska, and Washington. So I did a few things, yeah. So you you you've got already a couple legs up on the on this whole global economy we're in, huh? Uh, I wouldn't say that much. <laughs> Just a tad <laughs> bit. <laughs> uh, well, uh, terrific. Well, definitely want to thank you for your service. You know, we appreciate all the sacrifices that you made while serving our country. So um, my pleasure. You bet. So let's let's change gears a bit. Let's talk about what you're currently doing. Uh, you're a full time student at Clayton State University, right? Yes. Um, so, majoring in supply chain management for and my marketing. Mind. Yeah. So that's a really neat combination. I, it, what I've seen, I've seen a lot more, especially in the Fortune 100 supply chains, actually bring on marketing expertise. So, so you're going to get your four-year degree in supply chain management while uh, going through a lot of marketing classes as well. Yeah. So what it, what made you uh, decide to minor in marketing? in addition to your supply uh, chain studies? Well, basically, because in supply chain management, the end goal is always the customer. The customer mm-hmm. is going to receive the product, and you want to make sure that you keep your customer satisfied. So marketing, it basically, to me, in my opinion, marketing, um, supply chain is a sector of marketing because at the end of the day, you know, the, the customers are what makes business thrive. And so learning how to satisfy your customer, knowing, you know, the target markets of different customers, that's what's going, that's, that's what's going to keep the supply chain um, process going. Love so it. that's why I decided to uh, minor in marketing. 
very sharp. So of your experience so far, because I think you're graduating in, uh, let's see, um, in fall 2018, right? Yes, that's right. So what's been, the, so, so you're roughly three years or so of, of school, three plus, what's been your favorite class thus far or, or, or your favorite project maybe? I would definitely say my global sourcing course, um, basically mm. just focusing on the purchasing um, or procurement professional and supply chain. Um, they have to, you know, go go through a lot, you know, when um, being the middle person between the uh, manufacturing and other sectors of a business and the supplier. Um, so I think that they play a, a vital role in supply chain. So definitely the purchasing procurement type gl global sourcing class is definitely been my favorite course so far. Sounds very difficult. <laughs> no, it's, it's not too bad. <laughs> okay, you do it, you sleep. So, um, and I believe you work closely with uh, John Moscortolo, who's a bit of a supply chain all star, right? Yeah, he is. So, um, John, for our audience, uh, John serves as director for the Center for Supply Chain Management at Clayton State. I think. What do y'all? What, what's your nickname for for John there? Professor M. Professor M. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his name is pretty long, last name. That's right. It's thrown plenty of folks for loops. But uh, uh, John was a supply chain executive with leading firms such as NCR previously. So what a great uh, advantage. What's it like learning from and collaborating with folks like John at Clayton State? Um, Professor Mascaritolo, he really cares about his students. Um, he has a, a very vast network. Um, and so if he gets any connections or any opportunities for his students, he, he doesn't hesitate to share his opportunities. Um, and he doesn't hesitate to give you advice on your career or just share some of his past experiences. And to me, that, that would, that's what makes him an, an excellent professor. You know, he has something to give, you know, in addition to teaching you supply chain, you know, he gives you those real life experiences in supply chain as well. And he can really speak uh, from a perspective, I've been there and done that as well. Right, Kivya? Yeah, yeah, he does that a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, um, as part of this experience, as part of your educational experience, I think you also completed uh, an internship here recently with uh, XPO. Uh, is that right? Yeah, XPO Logistics. XPO Logistics. So, um, so what are some of the things that, that you, you did in that role, in the internship role? Well, basically, um, they're, you know, Excel Logistics is a third-party logistics company, so they outsource their transportation. They don't own their own trucking company. Well, they do, but they don't utilize them because of rates. So basically, what I assisted with was the shipping process, ensuring that, you know, any type of freight that left that warehouse, it was coordinated to go to the destination. Um, so I just assisted with that, you know, did Excel worksheets, um, coordinated how much would be on a load to go to point A to point B, and um, contacted the carriers via email to ensure that they would be um, on board to know what we were shipping and if they could um, send us different, you know, carriers to our facility. So basically, it was like a shipping slash transportation role that I mm -hmm. actually still with at Excel Logistics. So if there was one thing, one big lesson learned from your internship, what would that be? What was the biggest, what, one of your biggest takeaways from that internship at XPO? I would definitely be understanding the transportation aspect of supply chain um, because I think that's a big aspect of supply chain as well. Um, you just have to know how to, you know, contact your carriers, know who your carriers are, and just understand that process um, because at the end of the day, you know, you need transportation to get the product to the customer. So I definitely, you know, got a lot out of um, just understanding the transportation aspect of um, supply chain at that um, internship. Perfect. Well, uh, uh what a great sounds like a great program that XPO had internship program, uh, and love to see great leading supply chain companies offer internships. So sounds like a great experience. Um, yeah, it was a great experience. So in all of that spare time that you have, which uh, um, that's a that's a bad joke. You, I don't know how you do everything you do. You currently serve as president of the ASIC Student Supply Chain Roundtable at Clayton State University. Now, and I'll tell you, uh, Kivia. Um, you know, I've been a volunteer with Apex Atlanta for over 12 years, uh, and I've seen very few students that bring so much leadership, organization, and follow through as you do to the table. Uh, I, I'm sure the roundtable is very fortunate to have such capable leaders such as yourself be involved uh, in the group. So, so tell us, why do you volunteer? 
Uh, basically, I love to volunteer. You know, I feel that, you know, we have to know how to render services to other people. And um, that's one of the things that I truly believe in and being a student leader is rendering a service to students um, and, you know, encouraging them to get out there and assist in volunteering and, you know, encouraging them to, you know, learn more about the supply chain network and engage more, you know. So I, I, I love to render services to others. And I honestly think that you have to know how to give back and going forward. And that's mm. in, with anything that you do. So love it. that's why we, yeah. And I've seen you in action, and, and every to our audience, everything that Kibia just described there is what she does. It's not lip service. So what is your favorite aspect of your volunteerism? Just, you know, knowing that I'm doing something to help someone, um, I love helping people. So to me, that's a fulfilling um, purpose when you're volunteering and you're in, in return. You're not getting anything back, but it's just that warm thought and feeling of I help someone. Mm. You know, I took time out of my day to help someone else. To me, that's very fulfilling and volunteering. So, um, and I know you're not looking for return, but how do you see that, that volunteer experience, whether it's with APIX or, or, or um, out in the community, how do you see it helping your career? Um, basically, you know, um, wherever I go in my career, um, well, my new position that I just was offered is a leadership position. And so I feel that anytime you're placed in a leadership position or any position in general, you have to be willing to serve just a bit. Even though you're getting paid, you will always have to go above and beyond, you know, just a little bit with any job. Right. So just doing something, you know, oh, I'm not worried about, you know, what I'll get from this because, you know, I'm naturally going to do it, not because I'm supposed to, but because that's who I am. This says a lot about, you know, my character and, um, and it also helps the environment, any type of working environment that you're in, just mm. having a positive attitude and just doing something at free will. So, wow. Well, yeah. so let's talk about uh, one final thing I want to talk about in terms of your background. How do you see your um, Army experience helping your next employer? Oh, wow, that's a great question. <laughs> 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 well, most definitely, I think, because I joined the Army at so young. I was 19 mm -hmm. years old. So I definitely, you know, all the things that I probably would have came to the working environment with, it definitely fell off in the military. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely just developing that tough skin, um, not being sensitive in the working environment, knowing how to, you know, come to come to the working environment with a purpose, sure. getting my discipline. job done. Yeah. yeah, discipline, you know, integrity. Um, mm -hmm. And just, you know, sticking it out to the end is most definitely because I could never quit, you know. I had to serve my term. So um, not being a quitter and just, you know, looking forward and, to it, though. And it sounds like in, in talking with you earlier in this interview and, and some of our other conversations, you know, those leadership skills that you learn and leadership experience, um, you know, at 19 or, or when you got out being 24, you know, a lot of young folks don't have that same, those same early early career leadership experiences, that seems to be a great asset for you as well. Yeah, most definitely. So um, let, let me ask you a question. I see a lot of, I'm a veteran myself, and, and we do a lot of networking within our veteran community. Um, how, do you see it as a challenge when, when it was time to kind of take those Army skills and be able to talk about those stories from a civilian, uh, you know, a civilian point of view or being able to civilianize your resume? Was that a challenge for you? Um, it was a challenge. Um, it was a challenge in the beginning, uh, because you know, when you're getting out of the military, you have if you don't know what you want to do, um, it's, it's a challenge. Um, definitely getting out of the military, I didn't know how to word my resume. Um, I definitely had to get into the discipline of the study that I was in to use the correct grammar because you know, in the military, we use our own jargon, we word things right. differently. <laughs> we worry things differently. So I definitely think as veterans, if they can pinpoint what it is they want to do, you know, mm -hmm. study it a little more to get, you know, get familiarized with the vocabulary and, you know, maybe have someone to talk to. Like for me, for example, you know, seek a mentor like me. I, you know, Professor M has been great, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he, from the moment he met me, he was like, you got, you got to learn how to say what you did in the military mm -hmm. because it's like we're using two different uh, dictionaries. Absolutely. So, uh, so that's, that's, that's the advice that I would give any veteran, you know, if you get out here and you know what it is that you want to do, seek a mentor, somebody's out here that's willing to help and um, 
just study the area that you're looking to go into, and that's mm-hmm. helped me a lot on my resume. And also, you know, being active, um, you know, the supply chain um, leadership role that I have as the um, student with the student organization, you know, just, you know, being active and, you know, on a campus, um, because there's a, there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of room for improvement when you're just active, too, so that helps a lot. You, you shared a lot of best practices right there, and I'm going to circle back. I want to pick your brain on some advice for a few different uh, groups. But uh, to our audience, um, yeah, as, as an Air Force veteran myself, I know I struggled with what we're talking about, you know, converting our military duties in those initial interviews I had, you know, back in the early 2000s. And, I, and we see a lot of veterans currently in transition really struggling to talk about and write about their, uh, their considerable military responsibilities, leadership experience, and jobs. So, uh, for all of our veteran listeners, uh, one great resource to check out is Vetlanta, uh, which is an organization whose simple mission is to make Atlanta the number one destination to live and work in for veterans. So check them out at vetlanta.org. Um, all right, so, so circling back, Kivian, I want to pick your brain for some advice for others. Uh, I want to start by uh, what you would share with students, the students in particular that are looking to get into supply chain programs in college. Well, what would be some some advice and pointers you'd give to those folks? Um, I would definitely say look at the course um, work and um, actually, you know, look at some of these um, supply chain organizations, APIC, CSEMP, um, and and actually look into you know attending some of those sessions because there's so much information that you know I've gained from being you know an active. Um, APEC student um, member and the CSEMP member is so much you can hear from the from professionals what they're looking for. Um, I think that those are great assets for students. Um, definitely join a supply chain um, student membership organization. Um, definitely do that because it, it really helps you to know the the area and the um, the different direction that supply chain is going in. And I feel that those organizations they provide you know students with those those platforms. Um, and definitely, you know, know know what you want to study when you when you're venturing into college. And if you want to major in supply chain, um, definitely look at the course loads, uh, the, the type of classes that it's going to be um, fulfilling, and see if you see yourself, you know, learning about transportation or warehousing, and you know, learning the supply chain process. Mm. And and, all, and obviously also evaluate the program. I mean, everyone won't, won't have the opportunity to go to a great program like Clayton State University, but would you also suggest, you know, kick the tires on the credentials of, of the staff and, and the professors that will be leading the classes? Yeah, um, definitely do that. You know, you, you want to make sure that you, you, um, evaluate, you look at the evaluation of the professors and school and the tuition. All of those factors are very important when you're thinking about studying supply chain or any, you know, degree. Um, mm-hmm. But definitely, and also the location. Like, I think Atlanta is a great location for anybody in, in Georgia that wants to study supply chain in Atlanta, um, that's that's awesome. Um, definitely, you want to study in an area where you have an opportunity to get a good job and in a booming area. That's right, absolutely. And with Atlanta and the metro Atlanta area, for that matter, Georgia, you know, Georgia's been voted the number one state to do business in five years in a row. A big reason for that is is our supply chain infrastructure and technology and talent. So, uh, Clayton State's a big part of that big part of that formula there. Um, all right, so shifting gears a bit, uh, Kivi, as we kind of wind down the interview, what advice would you offer to employers that are looking to hire millennials or folks from even younger generations? I would definitely say, you know, give us a chance. You know, um, mm. I think that a lot of employers are really stuck in their ways. They have ways of doing things. They, you know, even the um, the human resources managers, they, they're they accustomed to doing things you know, traditionally, and I think that that involves, you know, not taking a chance on the younger generation, um, just giving, you know, having that faith in us to know that, you know, we have the ability to drive change, good change, positive change, you know, and to, um, as you already stated, supply chain is gearing towards the techno- technological side of things, mm-hmm. and I think that the millennials are a great aspect of that, just bringing the technology um, to supply chain and knowing how to drive it. So I definitely would say that just give us a chance. I know um, it's not it's not a lot of traditional <laughs> employers <laughs> who think like this, but you know I've heard a lot of millennial bashing, and you know not right. everybody does that. But I think that you know um, employers should just be willing to give a chance, you know, and, and you know, and, and a lot of times you won't be disappointed, you know, mm. and just have faith in millennials. So 
and, and by extension, it seems like uh, you're challenging uh, professionals to kind of check their assumptions at the door. And, and, yeah. and you know, millennium bashing, millennial bashing, unfortunately, it goes on a lot. I've, I've seen it myself. But, but rather than, than carry other folks' assumptions into these, these conversations, these hiring conversations, these business discussions, it sounds like you're, you're suggesting, you know, take an open mind and, and, yeah. uh, and, and some confidence and belief in these, in, in these other generations. Yeah, most definitely. So uh, one final question. So from an industry association standpoint, you mentioned APIC and CSE and P, two leading supply chain uh, associations, of course, in Georgia. We've got the Georgia Manufacturing Alliance. We've got WORK. We've got uh, ISM. We've got a bunch of different folks that serve, a bunch of different organizations that serve industry. Um, but how can these associations better engage and serve college students and young supply chain professionals in your perspective? Well, I would definitely say just, you know, be more open to, you know, working with them like um, like we do, you know, with our um, student supply chain roundtable, just doing volunteer work. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so much as, oh, be a mentor to, to the students. That would be great, but I think just allowing the students to engage and, you know, with the different platforms that these um, organizations provide, that, that gives students a lot because when we volunteer, we're able to sit in on panels and just hear the, the, the today, you know, discussion in, in supply chain. To me, that's more than enough, you know, and, and, and it allows you to take what you're hearing about supply chain today and integrate it with your studies and know the direction that the field is going in. So just being, you know, open to allow, to allowing us to attend panel discussions, allowing us to attend dinners or help or volunteer. To me, that's, you know, those are great avenues that these organizations can consider when thinking about supply chain students. Terrific. Great. I, I think yeah. we could bring you in as a mentor or consultant. I, I, I really Yeah, sure. <laughs> so uh, one last question. So how can people with any questions or maybe maybe some of these students that want to compare notes, what, what's the best way to reach out to you, Kibia? It Would it be LinkedIn, you think? Yeah, LinkedIn, most definitely. You can find me on LinkedIn at Kibia Morgan. Um, you can shoot me a message, and if you have any questions, I'll be sure to answer. Perfect. And, of course, to our audience, check out the APIC Student Supply Chain Roundtable at CSU, right? Yep, at Clayton State University. Clayton State University, that's right. Okay. Well, hey, thanks again, Kevia Morgan, uh, U.S. Army no veteran, supply chain student at Clayton State University, and very soon to be a supply chain practitioner uh, making yep. it happen out in the industry. Congratulations on that offer. So with that said, we're going to move into uh, wrap up. You bet, Kivya, thanks for all that you do. And, and we've certainly really enjoyed collaborating with you uh, from an Apex Atlanta uh, perspective. So I hope you have a great weekend. Um, me too. For our audience, we invite you to join us at an upcoming event uh, where you can meet supply chain folks from across all walks of life uh, on April 18th in a joint event with Apex Atlanta, CSEMP Atlanta Roundtable, and the Georgia Manufacturing Alliance, we're going to be tackling two topics that go hand in hand, like mama and apple pie, baseball, and supply chain management. Now, kidding aside, our industry associations will be presenting a panel discussion on the hot topic of digitization, especially focused on the small and mid-market space. We're pleased to be featuring uh, several great panelists, Peggy Gulick with Agco, Peter Yost with Four Kites, and John Catani with TechWave. After the discussion, we'll all enjoy an epic Braves beatdown of the hapless Phillies as baseball is going to be back in full swing very soon. For more information, visit apixatlanta.org or shoot us an email at info at apixatlanta.org. We hope to see you out on April 18th. Well, if you've got any questions on today's presentation, feel free to reach out to me via phone or email. Our email, ebp at apixatlanta.org. We also invite you to join us for one of our upcoming Supply Chain Now radio sessions. We're going to be tackling a, a wide variety of topics from leadership to inventory reduction to business intelligence and advanced analytics to critical business metrics. All these are currently scheduled uh, sessions. We're also very pleased to be hosting Jack Allen, uh, a true Supply Chain All-Star with Cisco, on our next live broadcast on March 22nd. In fact, Matt Markham, the new director for the Georgia Centers of Innovation for Logistics, will also be our guest on the 22nd of March. If you'd like additional information, send us an email with SCNR webinars in the subject line, again, to 
info at apixatlanta.org, and we'll make sure uh, you get taken care of. Finally, we want to thank our guest again today, Ms. Kibia Morgan, as well as our sponsor, Talent Stream, for making our show happen today. We hope you'll tune in to our next wave of programs and learning opportunities. For Apex Atlanta and Supply Chain Now Radio, this is Scott Luton concluding this broadcast and wishing each of you a wonderful weekend. Thanks, everybody.